So chances are if you found this video it's because you're looking for lap timers. Um, I've tried a couple, Phobos seems to be the one that's working for me, it's open source and the dev team have been really good. It's, uh, it's running on an ESP32 and uh, a little RX5808, you solder the two together, they run off of USB power so just off a little power bank and it reads out your lap times as you're going around so you can actually hear yourself if you're going faster or slower and it's really helped me to progress. All in, this has cost me about £35 and I got everything off of Amazon and eBay. One of the things that you'll need is a ESP32 board. These are nice and cheap. You don't have to use an ESP32, there's other hardware you can try. And you also need a RX5808 RF uh, board. The wiring diagram you can find on the GitHub and you just need to solder a couple of pins. I'm terrible at soldering but I managed to do it. Once you finish soldering it should look something similar to this. You may have different hardware because there there's lots of ways you can do it. And then this is just a NAF 3D print. First thing you need to do is go to the Phobos LT GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below and it's going to run through all the different software um, and how you, how you do this. It's got the uh, wiring diagram as well. Um, Everyone's going to have different bits of software, but I've installed this on a brand new computer in the order I had to do it from. So first thing I had to do was Visual Studio Code. You can get that on the link here. Uh, just run through, download, next, next, next. Visual Studio Code is the software that you're going to actually see the actual source code, compile it and flash it to the SP32. A lot of the screen recording here is actually sped up because it does take a while to go through, but this is now Visual Studio. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is some of the extensions that go into Visual Studio. And the first one is called Platformio. I probably mispronounced it, but me. So go down to the bottom, go to the extensions, go to the very top and type in Platformio, and then just click on Install. This takes quite a long time, so again, so this has all been sped up. It takes really quite a long time. Well, for me. Once it's finished, it will tell you to restart Visual Studio. This is important. If you don't, it doesn't work. The next thing that you need to install is Git. So again, follow the link and go to the, to the download page, start the download, and just do next, next, next again. Once that's finished, again, you must restart Visual Studio. If you don't, it doesn't work. The next bit is quite specific. When you're in Visual Studio, you've got to press Control, Shift and P to bring up the dialog and go to Git Clone and then paste in the GitHub uh, URL. If you use GitHub, I'm sure that's common sense to you, but I'm not a big user of it and it took me a couple of attempts to get that right. Bit embarrassing to say, but when you know, when you know. You then create a folder where you want to save everything to. So I just did mine in my downloads folder and just called it Phobos. Once you've finished, you can delete this. This is just whilst you're, whilst you're flashing. This is now downloading from Git. Click on open. And here's the project. Then click on yes, I trust the authors. Trust me bro. And this is loaded. This is gonna download a few more things. And it's finally saying updated and I think this is ready to go. So I take my ESP32 and it's time to plug it in. So open up the Phobos LT folder and click on build. This takes a while. Go make a cup of tea, have a beer, whatever you do. Once it's done, you will see successful in the bottom of that window. So then you go to upload. And this is where I had one of my first problems. Um, the first time I ran it, as you can see, this is gonna run through and it's gonna come up with failed. What I'm missing here is there's a driver that I've got to install. Not everyone's gonna have this problem. Um, so what I did, right click on start button and go to device manager. And under other devices, you should see an exclamation mark next to the uh, USB to UART. If you see that, type in CP2102 driver and go to the Silicon Labs website. Again, download. So once you're done, finish downloading, extract it, and then right click and go to update driver, browse for my computer, browse again, 
go to the download folder, do OK, do next, and that should then install the driver and we can try again. Back in Visual Studio Code, click on upload again. This should now complete, come up as successful. And then we need to go to upload file system image. Success. And that's it, that should be everything we need to do on this side of things. So the way that we access Phobos um, is actually by its own Wi-Fi hotspot. So either on the computer you're doing this from or from your phone, whatever you want to do is go to the uh, Wi-Fi networks available and look for one called Phobos LT. Connect to the hotspot and the password is lowercase Phobos LT. Once that's connected, open up a browser and go to the IP address 20.0.0.1. This is where you change the channels and this is where you can do the calibrations as well for the tracks. And if you see this, that means it's working. If you've got any other problems, drop a message below or try the Phobos team on their Discord. They've been really helpful to me, so big massive thanks to them.